Okay, in this video I'm gonna make a rhyolite. This is California rhyolite. I call it Barney Jasper because it's purple. And um, I'm going to make a, uh, what is it called? Borax Lake Wide Stem, which mostly were made around the uh, Humboldt area and Mendocino County, but also extend into the valley. And there are similar types, which are probably Borax Lake Wide Stems, which are uh, mid-archaic form and a lot of them have concave faces and fluting mild fluting um, or at least basal thinning and so that's what we're going to do this is a much longer preform so it'll be interesting to make something that's maybe a little bit longer but typically not a problem and uh, most of the ones that it, most of the examples I've seen are about an inch to an inch to an inch and a half long but a lot of them exhibit resharpening so I'm sure they're making larger forms as well fortunately certain areas of California are just really rugged and trying to find archaeology or point examples from certain areas can be pretty challenging crushed because it was just maybe not isolated enough or didn't contact the tool right. <clears throat> Might have to work a little bit lower just because sometimes it's nice to support the preform on my leg versus down below. And I will try to work in frame but I, I just man I'm, I'm so bad at staying in frame. I filmed quite a few videos recently and, and finished like an entire point and just like all all out of frame. So, this is from a spall. You can see the original exterior of the stone. And I don't want to get this in too thin, but... There's a crack up towards the tip on this face. Get around it. I'm gonna see if I can use the elk on this one. This elk, I was using it on, and I can use it eternally on obsidian, but it's wearing, and I was punching rhyolite, and it split off, and it, we're getting down to the, you can see the pithy material on the inside, so I can work around on corners of it. But this is a um, still really good piece of antler. It is more soft but there are still areas that you can use on the tool to uh, extend its life. I don't know if this is gonna work with this platform here, but kind of hit it dull, like straight in. Might be a little too thick at this stage for this tool. I really like using this one for edging and making the preform the right having the right contours if I'm gonna flute it for example I can just take really thin small flakes and <clears throat> work the edges bring the contours in and, and such I'm working off the corner of it because the interior if I were to work like this we'd be, just be making contact with that really soft antler in the middle cancel this antler and we don't want that we want to be working off of the really good stuff this material actually resembles um, <clears throat> certain rhyolites from different areas or porcelainite. And Kelly, hey Kelly, if you're watching this, he actually found some rhyolite that looked pretty similar to this. Kind of a purplish red. Which is pretty cool. Oh, the mosquitoes, man. Mosquitoes are relentless tonight. So we got this crack. Try to punch it off. I 
I'm working kind of slow. I could try to work a little faster just to make this more entertaining. We got a we got this flat surface you can see from the exterior. So we gotta just take some contouring flakes that are kind of angled down. Build a little bit of contour and also some body so that when we thin it later we have somewhere to go with our flakes. These are just very simple flakes, but the angle is important. And because they're not thinning flakes, I'm not too worried about isolating them all that much. You can see um, they're just kind of, well, I could actually probably get a thinning flake right there. So maybe I'll space it out a little bit. This is going to be great contact because it needs to be turned a little more. Tool needs somewhere to rest. Nice. Getting it, getting it off the corner on the on the antler there. Really nice. Now we actually can take a little bit more down here. I tend to have a pretty bad reputation for uh, <laughs> working on the base too late and leaving it thick, so I'm trying to get better at that. We are going to lose a little bit of length over down here on the base because I got to contour it correctly and make it symmetrical. But so we just took that flake here. We have some more thickness. Edges turned this way somewhat. We'll turn it a little bit more, but. Once we do that, we'll have the ability to take some more thinning flakes this way. And if we fail, we can shoot up from the base. So this is where this sharper tool, more fine tip tool comes in really nice, handy. Comes in handy because we can <clears throat> turn the edge and get rid of all these little deltas really easily. And grind off all the little sharp areas and so the first one didn't work and I was punching it kind of harder on that one the platform it's kind of thicker so you see it released a little harder try to get one more angled this direction so it doesn't run into the previous scar that's good enough Nice little series. <clears throat> this was a large rock, and when I found it, <clears throat> it had a lot of cracks on the outside, and I just took a, I was down in the creek, so I just took a, a large hammer stone and just dropped it on a little corner that was exposed on this rock and took a big flake off, and I think this was one of the pieces of the flakes. Then here's a couple others. This is a larger one and not as high quality as this piece. You can see it had some cracks and stuff, so we'll see how solid it is. I think it's tree sap or something, but yeah, have to work it out. I gotta make a Clovis out of this material just because it's so freaking cool. Basal thinning. This is a really sharp platform. Comes to a nice sharp tip. So, so, we got to contact it really nicely on this tool and make sure that it's sitting on, on something. And I'm not going to hit it hard. I'm just going to hit it pretty soft. Oh, it didn't really catch. Even that was too, too sharp. 
but when I have sharp little delicate platforms, I don't I just like to drop it down on the tool. There we go. Now we can keep going this way. Got some thickness over here. This is a, well, I just spat on the people. This is a heavy platform for what I'm doing right now, but I think this tool will be able to power through it. Yeah. And I'm supporting these pretty hard, so the flakes are really going pretty far. That one split a little bit on the ridge there. And to maintain balance, I'm actually gonna go back this way because we have, we have to take some flakes up there. <coughs> My biggest challenge when it comes to maintaining balance is trying to ensure that I'm not thinning on one side too much and then also that my platforms are turned enough. If they're not turned enough then you'll end up scooping out the edge and having thickness on that side but the edge is turned down to that side too much and then you end up with a curved point kind of and that's no fun. do want to get a want to get a flake right here hopefully it'll be able to catch up on this ridge here nice <clears throat> and this point style has pretty random flaking so I'm not too worried about that Most of them show percussion flaking with, uh, and then the resharpening is pressure. And of course, some nice pressure fluting or thinning on the base. This elk punch is definitely well within its prime still. Although on harder materials, I haven't been using it just because I know it's gonna fail. The hinge there, crushed, crushed platform. Got some cool banding in there, some lighter color. And this material, when you work it, that's something about the way that the flakes travel, it instantly looks old. Kind of like how Rainy Buttes looks. It's like the <clears throat> excuse me. It's like the ridges aren't completely sharp, as if they've been slightly polished or something. Whoa! I know that the natives are working this material because. Um, I found a couple preforms. Oh man, I was hoping that flake was gonna go into there. That's okay, we're gonna do basal thinning anyway. Because I found some preforms down in the creek, albeit they did seem that it was mostly just for tool flakes or testing the material and then left it behind. But I've never seen any finished points from this purple chert. Or rhyolite some sort of material we don't know exactly what it is and Ken Peek and I have been trying to figure out maybe if it's a variety of Farmington chert which I believe it probably is because I've found pieces that have green rhyolite chert kind of mixed in with them so that's probably what it is <clears throat> Tiny, tiny little contouring flakes on the base. Tilting the edge so we don't take too long of a flake, but we create contour. And these kind of have a similar form to a pinto basin point. 
This is actually a pretty good thickness, but I'll do one more series of thinning flakes on this face. We, have, we got some pretty good uh, flaking right now on it, but I'll probably take a flake over here and maybe some from over here. I like the bold percussion flakes across the face though, it looks pretty cool. I don't want to, I don't want to lose too much more width on this. Ooh. Okay, that platform ended up getting a little too isolated and it's pretty sharp. I'm going to give it a good cross grind. Treat it right. Oh, there's some sort of stuff in there. It went well. Nice thin flake. We can get another up here. Space from that. Contacting the right spot. There we go. Well, I can see that it released all the way, but it didn't come out quite yet. It's okay. <coughs> Maybe this will be like a early. Oh no. Oh no. That's a big hinge. That's a big problem. Hinge city over there. Fortunately, we will resharpen the tip a little bit. Let me move a little closer to the camera. But yeah, I just got that hinge up towards the tip there. Hopefully, we can get that later. When it scoops out like that and takes pretty much all the thickness with the all the edge thickness with it, it's important to weight it out and bring the edge in closer to the hinge instead of trying to attack it right after you remove that flake that created the hinge because it's just not gonna be worth your time and you're gonna dig that hinge deeper and make it stronger and give yourself less opportunities to thin it out if you don't have any mass for a future flake to remove it with. This might actually get it. This might get it. Flake coming down from the tip, thinning up the thinning up the tip pretty good. Got the hinge, although that one hinged in there a little bit. But when we take the flake this way, it should get rid of it. And this is the edge I was talking about. You just turn the edge with the hammer stone too. It's typically what I do. I'm gonna start down here. Work up. Darn it. It was a hinge. So, maybe we'll have to clean it up. Hopefully we'll be able to clean it up from the other side. <clears throat> I was actually thinking that flake was gonna go better. Lipping the edge a little bit. There it goes. There's that hinge there. Got rid of most of it. We can probably get another one across. <coughs> More straight in. I think my main thing is just clean flaking. And my main priorities are clean flaking and just decent uh, thickness. 
at least for some point styles of course some need some need more more thicker body or cross dimension diamond cross section I think a fishtail on this material would look really cool. It'd make like an oxbow point as well. And it pressure flakes really well as well. Okay. So, it's looking pretty good. We gotta start taking the base in. And the basal thinning I'll typically do with uh, a vertical punch so we get down in between those notches in the split base this point style is also uh, at least at the borax lake site type site named and uh, after that site and then also associated with a lot of franciscan shirt butterfly crescents some Pretty cool archaeology at that site and that's one of the only fluted point sites in actually might be the only fluted point site in California I could be wrong but I don't really hear about many others Tulare Lake of course is not a in situ site but that's where most of the fluted points have been found There's a lot of borax lake wide stems that resemble Cody complex type stuff with just very basic bases. <clears throat> but on the type that I'm making right now, it's kind of more typical of some of the ones that are found up towards hum up in Humboldt County, extreme northwest California. And those ones are usually split stem. Made from chert. I'm doing some contouring flakes right now. Also, the bases are not typically, um, they're not always, at least on the style that I'm making, completely straight in. They, they come in at an angle, kind of like a McCorkle point. Kind of tapering it slowly. We can get another point, another flake over here. Just get rid of this little hinge here. But I like that pattern, so we'll just do some small contouring flakes with the corner of the punch. Start down here. I'm actually going to put this down a little lower. <clears throat> Get more support. Nice. Ugh. Whenever I do that, I send a bunch of flakes into my face. It's up. Up stretch, maybe not the best idea. So I'm gonna do a small one right here, isolate that ridge more. There we go. Get a longer flake here. Totally crushed. Let's see. Because we've got some thickness there for sure. So we want to try to get that out of there. It's a matter of trying to use the punch when it's pithy like this and making sure that you're contacting areas that are strong enough on the punch and that was a I believe I ground that platform pretty well felt like a good platform sometimes that happens just it just happens 
take the base in more steep angle because we don't want these flakes to go far because we're going to do kind of somewhat of a flute. And actually, these will just be, this will just be a contouring flake. I was, initially, you saw the angle, I was trying to go for a thinning flake, but I'll just come down on it. Ran into the other one a little bit, but fortunately it was a pick out hinge. Little hinge right here. Kind of avoid it and see if we can come high and get it. There it goes. See if we can. And it's funny, you can see the angle of the flakes that I'm putting in here are usually are kind of downward because I'm working off of the corner of this piece that has pith in the middle. These flakes would be going more these flakes would be going more inward. Sorry, I wasn't talking in the right spot. These flakes would be going more inward, but they're not because I'm working off of the corner of the tool. So I'm angling it kind of more oblique. And so I think that's interesting. It's harder to build contour that way if you're working like that because the flakes are gonna travel downward into air, other areas of thickness that you may not want. But I'm gonna see if I can send this one more inward. If we can work off the top of the tool, that might work. Yeah, but here's a problem. Just doesn't seem like it was contacted that well. Hinged out a little bit. <clears throat> right now, I'm just trying to, I wanna add more contour and uh, clean flaking, so. Little experiments like that probably aren't the best idea. Some nice contour plates here. Just coming up over the ridge, adding a little bit of body. They're probably hunting elk with these. Of course, all kinds of animals. You know, California, other states in the Midwest and Great Plains had the bison. Um, and similarly, California in the Central Valley had the elk. It's about as close as we got to having bison in the Central Valley. Obviously not the same, but would have been a major resource for the hunters. Although during the Pleistocene, there were Bison, Antiquus here, Antiquus, Antiquus, and uh, probably would have been hunted by the first peoples of this area, but I'm not sure if they overlap with the peopling of California, but as far as I understand from what I've heard, they were here around 10,000, 11,000 years ago, which would be right around the time that people were here, so... contour right here because a little flat and weird right there. And then if we want, since we made some contour, we can take a little bit of a longer flake. Kind of like just with a slab, you know. If you've <coughs> got a slab and you want to take some longer flakes, you have to add contour first so that the flakes have somewhere to go as they run. A 
Because flint nappers were always scared of thickness. We're trying to thin things down, but if you want to make points with robust, if you want to make strong points with nice bodies and good flaking, then it is in your best interest to leave some thickness on certain areas. Damn, that was a good platform and it just crushed. Yeah, I may not have braided it enough. There we go. Tilting these high because I've got clean flaking over here. And for one, I want to maintain and preserve clean flaking. So the chances of them hinging out are pretty low if I'm using good power and tilting the angle on a nicely abraded platform. And tilting the angle high like this, or I guess low. If the angle is inward, the flake is gonna go further, but it also has the likelihood of hinging out. And right now, I've done my thinning, and I'm only kind of just doing shaping and opportunistic uh, flakes. So like right here, we've got, we've got this area, where this is all kind of, this is just slightly higher. This is hinged out, we still got to get that from this side, but this is just going to be, this platform, I'm going to grind it a little bit harder, but this platform is not going to go far. I just want it to go just far enough to where it's going to maintain contour and not leave too much hinging. It ran over into this one a little bit, but like I said, we're going to turn that over. First, we'll go this way. <clears throat> Turn that side. So this is just simply me flint napping and I'm not trying to teach too much. And I would also say that there are other people that are far more qualified to learn from than myself, but it's important that people get to see how other people nap as well. So this is a nice contour flake. We're gonna do some thinning in the base and we want the base to also have some thickness as well. So I just wanted to add a little bit there and then follow it down this ridge as we bring in the base. And I'm not supporting my hand on my leg, so I could probably get more power. Well, I know I could get more power in these flakes, but we, like for this one that I'm about to do, we're, we're gonna put it on my leg. But for a lot of these, as long as I pinch it hard enough and I can feel that it's right on the platform, I'm pretty confident that I can get the flake, the desired flake that I want. Actually, that's, there we go. That's actually not a great platform at all, but it should be enough to clear up this hinge here. And not go too far. There it goes. Cleaned up a little bit, and it did, it did, like I said, go a little too far, but um, cleaned up the hinge from the other side and added to our our strength of the body on this piece. It's the beauty of the punches is you can get control the angle so easily. Now we're just contouring. We've done the thinning that we need and I like the flaking on this piece we might need to do a little bit more thinning on the base here because you can see it's kind of thick down in here and I would try to get a flake right here but 
there's this hinge right here but as because we're going to bring in the base more it shouldn't matter as i turn this edge we're going to pretty much chip off that hinge on the edge and it won't matter we use the other side of the punch now it looks like that side might be too pithy or not right not the right angle having a lot more success right here this little pocket here So it was not a great flake. Not a great flake. Fortunately, we'll be able to get it up from the base. Not only did they find fluted points at the borax lake site, but they did also find a lot of these wide stems. And a lot of the wide stems exhibit flutes. There it goes. It's kind of hinging out though. Let's clean that up from over here. This material has a somewhat maybe more of a like higher likelihood to hinge out a little bit because it does form in layers and seams. And sometimes the pieces when you're working them, they will have layers this one not much but sometimes i don't want to blame that on the rock when it's probably my fault yeah clean up that hinge there <clears throat> all right balance wise we're looking pretty good i could probably chip up a little bit onto this face here Or I would like to. Okay, let's put the base on now. Most of it we can do with this tool. Steep flake, steep flake again. I'm sure I could actually maybe even get you guys a little closer. My videos tend to be. Let me see if I can change the color of this light. That might be better focus. Was that better? This seems to be a little better. Maybe really white light. The flaking is pretty clean here. And we'll do very minor edge work with pressure, I guess, if we need to. Um, but we're gonna bring the base. This one does have a taper. Some of the other ones don't, which is unfortunate, but the ears kind of actually we'll just do we'll just do like a basic one of these guys and then have the base come in like that mm -hmm. I'll back up a little bit too so I'm in frame this side is more convex than this side so if we're gonna do a flute or a thinning flake we want that side to be fluted first so that when we turn we lose a little bit of that scar but by the time we flute the other side, it matches up pretty nicely. Hopefully, that's the idea. But since I'm doing this with um, a vertical punch, it shouldn't matter. I don't really care too much about those. <clears throat> I'll have to look back at some of the uh, pictures of the artifacts from the type site and see kind of like how deep those 
flakes go, those thinning, basal thinning flakes. I did one the other day and since it's inside, I should have brought it out here out of the same material. And uh, I did the flaking in the base, the thinning with a vertical punch and it looked pretty good. So I'll probably do that again this time. Okay, let's bring the base in. Add a little bit of character here. <laughs> I'm not typically known for uh, symmetry on my points. I'm not really known for any <laughs> thing on my points. But I think that symmetry is important and it makes a point look good. I just tend to, to forget about it sometimes. Or when I'm putting the base on, I'm thinking about flaking or other stuff. The rest of the base will be done with pressure. We can bring this in a little bit, do the shaping, but we'll do a thinning flake here. There's one of them. And then we'll do the other. We'll do like a double flute on this one. That one kind of crushed. The platform could have been turned a little more. There's the little double flute, <coughs> basal thinning, and we'll flip it over. The ears on these are pretty fat. This is kind of looking more like almost like a Tulare Lake Basin Paleo. But we'll get the pressure flaker out and we'll put some shoulders on it. I want these ears to be a little more rounded, so I'm going to sacrifice a little bit. Right there. Oof, that one hinged a little bit. It's okay. Yeah, maybe we'll just go for double flutes, so just random basal thinning. One in the middle here. Actually, I'll go one on the side first. There's that one. Oh, we caught hot a little bit. Damn, we left ourselves with not, not a great... <clears throat> that last flake we caught, so we're gonna bring this in because that platform left over is too thin. Does not have enough space to go because we're getting into these ears here. Let me just switch to the vertical punch like I said I was gonna do. I recently, recently sharpened it because I was making a putter and point so I was getting down into those ears. So it's pretty good for doing what I'm doing right here. So this has a kind of more of like a pinto basin taper because it a lot of the pinto basins are more excurvate where they come down and then constrict and then the base is put on. Um, a lot of the borax lake wide stems are kind of more of a triangular with a, a stem on them or a square base. And that's fine. There's a lot of variability in California point styles. <clears throat> Lots of small areas and uh, areas that were, you know, wrapped up in mountains and probably a lot of different isolation in terms of, or diversity in terms of tribal groups and uh, culture interpretations of different point styles and could vary widely. Yeah, put the, some thinning in the base here, this guy. And actually, 
it's kind of hard for me to angle my tripod down because of the way that it's in a little clamp. I'm going to put the light down more. Just trying to get the base thin here so this flake will be a little longer. I'll do this one more inward. Here we go. It hinged out, but we'll, we can probably get that from uh, the side because we have to bring the ears in. So we'll do pressure and I can punch in a lot of that as well right now. But I want to keep these scars here. So if we're going to intrusively flake into this scar to get rid of that hinge, which we don't have to. Looks kind of cool, but it's a pretty uh, sharp hinge. We can. By turning a steep angle, we're not taking long flakes, so we're blocking them from going too far in. But some of the ears on these also go inward, so yeah, we'll do that. <clears throat> let me get out my pressure flicker. Or actually, let me just, I'll just use this. This is, Ken gave this to me. It's probably signature Ken Peak. Um, Probably deer antler looks to be. There it goes right over it. Exactly what I want to get the sharp side of it without removing too much of the flake scar. <clears throat> then we'll up in these ears, we'll add some more and a lot of them have rounded ears oh, 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 oh. Some of them, the bases also have a somewhat constricting to them. I don't think I'm going to do that on this one much. Do a thin flake right here. I was thinking like, oh, let me do a thinning flake here. And then I was like, oh, well, I don't want to intrusively flake into this, these pretty double fluted scars much. Now we'll do a slight contraction of the stem. how I want the base. Let's do a little bit of fixing up on the base here where we had this area of, uh, we took that vertical punch flake and it left a little bit of a sharp sharpness on here. Get rid of that. A little more shaping. <clears throat> Sometimes I get carried away on the base and then end up kind of screwing up the roundness or thickness and shape that I initially wanted or was happy with so it's good to and I'm liking the way it looks right now so it's good to back off if you think it looks good although balance wise there's a little area over here that 
We should take some flakes up this way. Okay, for the edge work, honestly, we'll just finish it up with the punch. Um, where is that? Right here. But it's pretty much done. We're just gonna put put a little bit more sharpness on the edge and then put put a sharper tip on. And this is a nice tool for that because it's got lots of little angles on there that we can work off of and take small flakes with. It is really hard for me to stay in firm all the time. Different tools require different angles and such. Even these sharpening flakes, I, I want them to be, I want them to not hinge. I want them to go across nicely. And you can see there, got this little spot on the tip Put to go through nicely. There it goes. Tip balance is an important thing too. Adds sharpness and robustness and strength to a point. So now I can work off of this little corner here. Oh, hope that's focused. Now I can work off this little corner on this side because there's areas where, like right, right here, this is, doesn't even really have to be braided much, but I'll just turn it, tiny little flakes to sharpen up the edge, straighten it out, and you can see those there. So we can use the different angles on the tool and the wear to our advantage. Take all these tiny little edge sharpening flakes while maintaining some of the bold flake scars from previous thinning and contouring flakes. I'm going to leave this one with a somewhat more of a rounded tip just because a lot of the originals have that. Just because the tip is rounded doesn't mean it's not sharp. You can create a really, really sharp edge on a rounded tip. <clears throat> kind of a deeper flake but um, I'll just match it over here on this side so we can maintain balance and taper there it goes that'll probably do it for the tip here and if we want we can just do shaping There's just a couple more little deltas and areas that we can remove here. This area right here. Fix that up a little bit. Tiny 
tiny, tiny little edge work flakes. Probably don't even have to, it's not necessary to abrade for some of these, but. Oh, I don't know. Oh no. I hinged the edge a little bit there. Darn it. It's a little fearful that that might happen. Unfortunately, it's just a tiny little edge hinge. <clears throat> comes with making some of these sharp edges with the finishing punch. Okay, that's good. Um, these are ground on the base sometimes, so we can grind the base. As we do that, you're also adding a little bit more constriction to the base. I need a, um, a hammer stone that can get down in there, or we can use a flake, or this piece of quartzite will suffice. I actually use this one as a nail file. This is New Mexican red quartzite. Basal grinding is also an opportunity to change up and finish up the shape a little bit. Like there is this little nub in this in this side here. I'm not gonna grind that out, but if I wanted to, I could. But I can use it. Just punch out a little bit. Okay, I don't want to get carried away and pay a lot of attention in the, in the latter parts. <clears throat> there it is. Decent balance. Overall, pretty clean flaking. I'll have to make a clovis out of this material. Yeah. Thanks for watching.